All right, disclaimer. This is a personal YouTube channel. Any views or opinions represented in this YouTube channel are personal and solely belong to me as the owner and do not represent those people, organizations, or institutions that I or may not be associated with in professional or personal capacity unless explicitly stated. Any views or opinions are not intended to malign any religion, ethnic group, club, organization, company, or any individual. So, um, let's continue. Um, after so after that um, impact prediction, of course, um, we have to go, we have to evaluate those predictions. So once impact um, has been predicted, there is a need to assess the relative significance because um, there is a possibility that this impacts might not have an adverse impact. It may have an impact to the specific ecosystem or community per se, but it's its uh, veracity, magnitude, and significance might not be that much. So in which, in this uh, topic, um, we will analyze the significance of impacts as basis for implementation of mitigating, um, mitigating or mi mitigation measures. So of course, as what we've known, um, or as what we've discussed on the previous meetings, every time that there is an adverse impacts, the best thing we can do or or the very main reason that we have an EIA study is, of course, um, to, mitig to have a mitigating measures um, to whatever it is or to what may be the adverse impact of the specific project or um, activity. So the questions of uh, the question of significance of impacts on the natural en environment constitute the very heart of the EIA. Um, of course. Um, the reason why we are con conducting an EIA study is, of course, for us to know, predict um, what could be the possible impacts of the specific project or um, activity. So from any perspective, the focus of impact assessment narrows down to judgment whether the predictive impacts are significant. So the concept of um, significance needs a clear operational framework. Um, we could go for statistical significance, um, ecological concern, and of course, the social importance. In which um, the question of significance um, focuses on the evaluation of significance um, involves interpretation and application of judgment. Um, that is why, again, it's very important to have an EIA team that are expert enough enough to the specific project or specific activity because judgment can be rationalized but of course um, all involve values and are all subjective um, in which as you can see in this graph on the left side of the slide we have here um, on the um, vertical uh, vertical line, we have the analytical method. On the horizontal line, we have the intuitive, uh, intuitive mode. And um, is this hypotenuse? <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> um, on the third uh, side of the rect of the triangle, <laughs> I forgot the quadratic something uh, of uh, in math. Anyhow, on this, um, as you can see here, judgment. Um, lie in a continuum uh, between analytical mode and intuitive mode. Um, when we say analytical mode, it's more of the objective um, aspect of thinking or of judgment or, or analytical mode. It's more of the objective. When we say intuitive mode, it's more of the subjective aspect. Because when we say intuitive, it's more about um, making a decision <clears throat> excuse me, or a judgment without no specific or direct reason. It's more about, you know, um, intuitive mood. Uh, it's more about um, deciding or, 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 or 
making a decision based on um, intuition per se. And and of course, judgment always juggles um, between the two because there are um, there are cases um, in, in in reality the way um, in reality um, in making an EIA study um, the EIA preparer can be biased at some point. It's not about it's not about, I'm not saying that it's not about um, fabricating the data per se, but it's about writing it in such a way that would go to the proponent's um, motive per se. Um, for example, the, the one that I explained to you early, uh, the one that I um, um, gave you as an example before, um, when it comes to public scoping, um, there are cases, there are proponents, before they do their public scoping, um, they go first to the community and try to reach out. Um, before they do the, the, um, the public scoping with the, from, the, from their representatives from DNR, from people's organization, before they do that, they go to the community and reach out. And they try to talk as to what could be the... Um, what could be their possible um, stand to a certain project or activity? And then from that, you, you can make, as, a, as the proponent, you can make, um, um, I would say, you can make a strategy on how to make the public agree to your specific project or to your specific activity. Let us say, um, that is why on some cases, like there was an example before, um, for example, of course, all, all mining projects in the Philippines would undergo EIA study. Even if community um, recognized that there is a huge adverse impact to this environment, to their community per se, um, of course, because it's a mining activity, but how come the proponent or the company itself were able to secure the EIA? It's because for sure the company or the proponent itself had the strategy to make the public agree to their specific project or activity, or let us say on that mining, um, um, on that um, um, on that mining activity. So um, my point is, my point is, when it comes to judgment, um, it can be subjective. Even if you have the analytical data per se, you can write the impact prediction, and you can of course write the mitigating measures. Um, based on your subjective um, judgment or based on your, let us say, rationalized judgment, there is, um, there, bias can still play or you being part of the AIA group or AIA proponent, there is still a point of it that you can be subjective. However, even if you are subjective, you have to be rational, you have to have uh, an evidence that your mitigating measures could still or your mitigating measures will work when it, come, when it comes to um, lessening the adverse impact of your specific project or activity. Um, the point here when it comes to judgment um, is there are points during the AI study that you can be subjective um, and may be biased per se, if, especially if you know, of course, if you are the proponent, if you are part of the AA study, of course, in one way or another, you want the EAA or the EA study to be approved by the DNR EMB, in which there are cases that you will be subjective. However, as long as, again, you can justify justify that, um, you can justify that through, through a mitigating measures, then therefore the adverse impact um, could still be uh, accepted. Uh, by the DNR MV, and then therefore it would still result to an issuance of ECC. Yeah, that's what it meant by um, evaluating the, the, the significance of a certain um, impact prediction. And then um, when we say analytical methods, of course, it seeks to introduce a rational approach to evaluation. <laughs>